Is it true you can't digest more than 30 to 40 grams of protein? So having more in one meal is wasteful. Absolutely false. Coach Greg, today's video, I'm gonna be answering your questions. So I ask people, hey, what do you want me to answer? You got your questions, here are your answers. Why are you always sending Chris Bumstead to retirement? Well, because I think he's gonna retire. You know, I always say what I think. I'm open, honest, transparent, and I'm telling you what I think. I think he's done. He's got his hair transplant. He's got a baby on the way. He's already got five Olympia titles. He's also got that autoimmune disease. He's a deep thinker and he's very proactive with his health. And so I think he's going to retire. Please explain the role of muscle maturity in bodybuilding. Muscle maturity equals density, striations, and condition. Muscle maturity to an extent, it's not a real thing. I mean, it is slightly, but in reality, if you're shredded and you have a lot of muscle, you're going to look like you have muscle maturity. Now, if you don't have a lot of muscle and you're not as lean, you're not gonna look like you have muscle maturity. And so for the most part, when people start dieting, they're not as lean. Their first bodybuilding competition they've ever done, they might compete at 8% body fat. They're not gonna look like they have a lot of muscle maturity. But if they were 5, 4% body fat, they're gonna look shredded. They're gonna look like they have a lot of muscle maturity. But not if they're a string bean. If you're six feet tall and compete 160 pounds and you're 4% body fat, you're not going to look like you have muscle maturity. The reason being, you don't have enough muscle. But look at the newest IPB pro in classic physique. He's the youngest pro ever in classic. It's 19 years of age and his name is Anton. Anton looks to have extreme amounts of muscle maturity. He looks to be in his 30s. At least his muscles do. And why is that? Because his muscles are massive and they're shredded. Massive muscles that are shredded at the same time equals muscle maturity. Will he in fact get more muscle maturity over time? Yes. You know why? Because he's going to get bigger and leaner. And so I'm 48 years old. Clearly I've got muscle maturity, but I'm also walking around at sub 8% body fat. And so my muscles look to be mature. There's hardly any fat covering them and they're big because I've been training for decades. And so that is muscle maturity. What does the timing of bum's wife's pregnancy tell us about his PD cycle? All it says is that you can get pregnant while taking steroids. Many people, both men and women, think that taking steroids is a form of contraception. They believe that it's kind of like using birth control, but it's not. Yeah, I get it. Women use birth control. It's female hormones. But just because a man is injecting male hormones, it doesn't mean they can't get a woman pregnant. Many people, I'm telling you a ton, and many men as well, think they're not going to get their wife and or girlfriend or one night stand pregnant because they're on steroids. Nothing could be further from the truth. And so please, I caution you, I beg you, don't think that just because you're injecting tests that you're doing a bodybuilding competition that you're not going to get your wife, girlfriend, or that one night stand or that girl you're dating pregnant. Does marijuana affect gains? The answer is yes, it can affect gains. It can make it better or it can make it worse. If you take marijuana, it helps you sleep better. It makes you eat more. Then that can improve your gains. Just think of it. If you're not eating enough, you smoke weed and it can make you eat more and you can make you sleep more, you're going to get more gains. Also, I've already seen the opposite effect. You smoke so much weed that it actually decreases your appetite. You end up not eating enough calories and you become almost that word that I'm not allowed to say. So skinny from not eating enough food that it causes problems. And so if you're using THC, smoking weed, whatever, please be cautious. Peptides and bodybuilding use. I've been using peptides since probably 2010. I was using CJC 1295 and GHRP6, GHRP2, hexarelin, ipamorelin, all kinds of peptides. Nowadays, we have BPC-157, TB-500. These are healing peptides known as the Wolverine stack. And we also have peptides for everything. We have melanotan, makes your skin darker. We have peptides, PT-141, supposed to make you hornier than last time. There are peptides for everything. Peptides are heavily used in bodybuilding. So as of right now, I think you're illegally allowed to buy them, but however, they are banned by WADA. And so if you're using them for drug-tested sporting competitions or drug tested tested bodybuilding contests, please be careful. Natural bodybuilding. Natural bodybuilding, it's almost dead. Hardly anyone is doing it. You hardly get any recognition. Remember, this is how I started. I did natural bodybuildings 42 times. Even when I won the national championships, even when I won the world championships, hardly got any recognition. And so in comparison to non-tested contests, for example, when Chris Bumstead wins the Mr. Olympia, far more popular. I wish, it would be my dream, that at the Mr. Olympia, they would at least add in a drug-tested competition. 
that would add in a natural classic physique, natural men's physique, natural open bodybuilding, and so that people that choose not to abuse performance enhancing drugs, they would actually have a chance. I would love, I repeat, love to see that happen. That way people would have more realistic goals, realistic physiques they can achieve. Because for example, if you're a 17, 18, 19 year old kid and you're looking up to all these freaks, you're going to know, and that's right, I mean know that you're not only going to need to use, but abuse performance enhancing drugs to get a physique like that. There is no way you can get to the elite as in the Mr. Olympia Championship by being 100% natural. And so you are in fact putting your life in jeopardy. That is sad. I wish there were natural organizations at the level of the Mr. Olympia or Arnold's where people could say, wow, I don't need to use anything. I don't care if I have 30 pounds less muscle than that guy. I'm going to compete at the top and get the recognition that I deserve. But as of right now, it doesn't happen. And so you need to compete for you. That's why I was able to compete for over 10 years, 100% natural. Not many people can say that. Remember, 42 shows natural before I took performance enhancing drugs. How many people can say that? Most people, they do their first show not natural. How much vegetables should I be eating as a bodybuilder and does it help with muscle building? Yes, it helps with muscle building. Obviously, you need all the correct micro and macronutrients and if you're not eating any vegetables, you're missing out most likely on many of those. And how much you be eating? About five servings a day. That's how much you should be eating. Obviously, if you eat too much, you might be getting too much fiber. They're very low calorie dense foods. You might not be getting enough calories. But for the most part, I don't see people eating too many vegetables. I see them eating not enough vegetables. And so if you're wondering how many vegetables you eat, eat more than you are right now. How do you stay so goddamn handsome? It's all in the genetics, you know? Clearly, it's all genetics. I know I'm a 10 out of 10. And if you've seen Baby Nikki and Gert's chart on the Richter scale of hotness, the hotter you are, the more money you can make. Clearly, it's justified because I am absolutely an Adonis. Imagine being this hot and not making money. So clearly, they've got it right. Baby Nikki and Gert, with that meta-analysis, they proved that the hotter you are, 9.9 on the Richter scale, you're making millions and millions of dollars absolutely without question and so thanks for the compliment are SARMs really that harmful yes they are really that harmful probably more harmful than you think I would say most people underestimate how harmful they are I'd say most people say oh SARMs there's not dangerous at all after all most of them they're just orals it's in a pill how could it hurt me it's not like it's steroids steroids are harmful well in comparison there are SARMs that are more dangerous than steroids if I had to compare most SARMs to Anivar I would say SARMs more dangerous than Anivar and so yeah it really is that dangerous is it true you can't digest more than 30 to 40 grams of protein, so having more in one meal is wasteful? Absolutely false. Just think of it this way. I know, for example, the vegan cyclist, he used to weigh 155 pounds. He's six foot two. He was only eating one meal a day. Imagine if he could only digest 30 to 40 grams of protein because he was only eating one meal a day. He would literally be withering away. He wouldn't be able to have muscle. He couldn't have been a champion bike rider if he wasn't able to assimilate more than 30 to 40 grams of protein. That doesn't even meet the minimum requirements by the RDA. And so depending on the type of protein, depending on how slow it is to digest, do you really think that you're just eating it and it's digesting in one meal? Say you have 100 grams of protein. Do you really think that 30 of those grams gets consumed right away and that the extra 70 just get wasted away? What if it's steak? 100 grams of steak. It takes perhaps 12 hours to digest that steak. And so you eat a 16 ounce steak at five o'clock at night. Do you really think only 30 grams of that protein is used and the rest get wasted? Six hours later, there's still some of that steak in your stomach. It's slowly being absorbed. And so just because you eat it all in one meal, in one serving, doesn't mean that all that protein is naturally being used right away. It's spread out over time. Is main gaining still a solid option if you're around 20 to 25% body fat? And so let's analyze our various options. Dirty bulking. I'm sure that all of you know that if you're already overweight and or approaching being obese, that you shouldn't be on a dirty bulk. And so clearly that's the case. What about a lean bulk? Do you really think you need an extra 300 calories a day when you're already above 20% body fat? Of course not. And so what about main gaining? That's where you maintain your current level of body fat. Let's call it 22.5 since you said 20 to 25. You're 22.5% body fat and you're happy with that. You feel good. You feel you look good. Your girlfriend, circle friend, whatever says, yeah, I love you at this body fat. I love the way that your body looks. I love the thickness that you got. I love it. I just want more muscle. Is there anything wrong with eating and maintaining 22% body fat and continue to build muscle? Nothing wrong with that. And so you could stay at the same 22.5% body fat and put on perhaps 25 pounds in the next five years. Whatever, nothing wrong with that. Their next option is to go in a slight deficit and try to build muscle slowly while slowly losing that body fat. 
It's a great option as well. Do you want to get leaner? Then you're clearly forced to eat at a deficit if you're going to want to get leaner. It's as simple as that. And your next option to go on a very hard diet, perhaps a crash diet, very low calories. Kind of like when Sam Sulik went to 23 to 2,500 calories from five to 6,000. Very hard crash diet. Most likely going to lose muscle, but you will lose fat very quickly. Main gain to me makes perfect sense. Or another great option to me was being a slight calorie deficit to slowly lose body fat while slowly building muscle. How many bodybuilding shows did you win before you became pro? Well, I won on my 50th show. I won probably half of them. So I'm going to guess about 25 shows that I win before I got my pro card.